Welcome to this S meeting today. The topic, well, I mean, as uh, Alex, would you like to start with the Shadow Realm and February 2nd relevance on the record? No? Okay. Well, so it's February 2nd. Happy Groundhog Day. And it's time to find out whether the groundhog sees its shadow realm. Thank you, Alex. Um, today's topic is uh, that uh, so Modable has been um, uh, implementing the CES proposals natively in the XS engine, and uh, we'll be catching up with them soon. Um, and so, what we'd like to discuss this week is. Uh, the divergences that they are proposing at the moment uh, for um, uh, for the compartment proposal, so that we're better prepared for when we talk to them next. Um, so I'll bring up the poll request. As soon as I find it. The, the, so, so they've been implementing Harden and There's compartment. The There's a link in the agenda. Mm -hmm. Oh, stick the link in the agenda. Yeah. Oh, I did. Oh, you did. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Ah, excellent. Um, let's take a look at that. Uh, sharing my screen. Thank you, Dan. That's excellent. Um, so they're doing a number of things for uh, uh, the, 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 the bit that's relevant for us today is that they are implementing static module record and the load hook and the resolve hook on the compartment, um, as, as well as some other ancillary features that we've discussed at this at this call in the past, like the module function, compartment module function uh, and such. And uh, the first notable divergence is that the static module record, instead of accepting the source string, accepts a record containing the source string, um, which is a superficial. Um, and we'll just talk about that next week. But the the interesting one is for a third party module record, there, the difference is that instead of just returning the third party module record itself in a load hook, it must be constructed with the static module record wrapper, which is probably a sensible thing for a native engine to require. Um, and, uh, the, the difference there is that instead of a source string, you send uh, a list of bindings and an initialize function. Um, this is very similar to what we're proposing for third-party static, static module records in the, uh, in the CES shim, as we've implemented in the CES shim. The difference is that this bindings array, uh, this closely resembles what would be parsed out of the source of a static module record, which is nice. Um, this, this uh, you, you could easily see <coughs> scanning, statically analyzing the text of a static module record and producing this array. So this means that there was an import statement at some point, and this was just an export statement, um, or not even a statement. These are uh, decomposed from a, the, the destructures of a, of a single statement. And this allows, the, uh, allows you to express imports, exports, and re-exports, I think. Um, it's just transposed in a different way than what we have in, uh, in our implementation. I think that this is just work to get converged on. I don't think there's anything existential on it. And whether we converge with them or they converge with us, I think it's fine either way. Do you have uh, any a, a sense of um, uh, an aesthetic sense from the point of view of somebody learning the API, which one is more intuitive, which one feels more natural? No, I don't, I don't have a sense for that. Do you have a 
can you remind us really quick what uh, the shims implementation uh, looks like? Yeah, it's um, the shim says um, it's an array of the module specify the import module specifiers for that are expressed in the static module record. It's an array of the static module, pardon, the, of the module, the, the import specifiers. Um, there's, there's, an, there's an array called re-exports, which corresponds to export star from import specifiers. Is it straightforward to get an example, you know, from a test or something? Uh, it's in the doc, let me see. So besides just sort of intuitiveness, the other another uh, issue is uh, for writing various algorithms that uh, people might be interested in writing uh, in terms of this API, which is the better um, form of input for for writing algorithms to to process. Yeah, I my 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 intuition is that in that case, if you were doing, for example, a bundler. You would be you would have you would pre you would process the data in the bindings array into the form that we're already using, um, because ultimately you need to get the list the array of uh, you, you need the array of imports and re-exports in order to implement a bundler. Okay, so that says that the what we're doing internally uh, from that perspective is the the better target. Uh, I, I feel so, um, yeah. Okay. Right. But on the other hand, on the other side of it, if you were implementing something that does static analysis on some other module format, this might be uh, an easier place to stop that's sufficient for the purpose. It just depends on which angle you're coming from. I have a promise in my head that won't resolve it. You can show me an example. It was really hard to listen to this conversation. <laughs> yeah, so this is this is the description of the, of the uh, um, these, this is, that's the compiled module form. Third party has this spec. So. Uh, oh, I was hoping for an example that corresponds to the example they gave. Yeah, uh, that's a okay. little harder. Not straightforward, all right. Well, I don't know where it is offhand. Um, I, I mean, just looking at this, one difference is that we would lose the relative order of import, export, and re-export uh, with, the, uh, the shims format. Yes. Um, and that might be important for, that might be important for load order. It hasn't been for us. Yeah. I'm, I, like, I, I'm trying to think of a case where there might be some load order, something, something. Uh, let's take that back. The, the load order is actually irrelevant. The, the, the load phase is scattered and gathered. It's the initialization phase that matters. Um, yeah. So, so sorry, so I'm not, I'm not understanding. Is there a semantics to the order that they're preserving and that we're losing? There might be with top level await when it at, gets added to the, ah. to the mix. And they do have top level await and we do not. Okay, okay. That's cer certainly a critical test. Yeah. Is there a test that would show an example? Uh, there might be. There probably is. <laughs> Almost certainly is. But there are many tests. And it's, the trick is to find them. Aside from the lost order information, is it trivial to convert in each direction between the two formats? Um, as, as Matthew says, it should be uh, able to get to the other, but maybe not from the other to the bindings list. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so, <coughs> so if aside from the lost information, it's trivial to go in both directions and theirs has information that we lose, that would, th those two criteria together would seem to resolve it in their, in their favor. Yeah. Uh, 
gosh, uh, CommonJS. That might be it because we're using CommonJS for third party. Yeah, here we go. Um, so this is the CommonJS static module record constructor, which doesn't read a static module record. It creates a third party static module record. Um, and this actually is quite illustrative. This is the heuristic analysis, which produces imports and exports. Okay. Um, and uh, so the, the CGS static module record uses the imports and exports obtained by the heuristic stat static uh, analysis and returns, <coughs> this is the shape of a third party static module record, imports, exports, execute. Now, uh, as we discussed with Modable, we want to rename this to initialize because that is closer to the terminology in, T in, T in 2.6.2, um, or rather I do. <laughs> Feel free to agree or disagree. Uh, uh, so this is, and this was my name choice, so it's clear this, this is something that I regret and wish to fix. Um, the, um, and then the initialize function our version of the initialize function receives the uh, what they call dollar sign over here um, in this initialize function. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the uh, this isn't the module namespace object. This there there there, there have to be two prox. Well, there have to be two objects. There's the proxied exports and the exports proxy. Uh, um, the this would be the target object of the module namespace proxy, um, which means that, uh, or maybe not even the target object. This is this is the mutable, the <coughs> mutable controlled interface from the perspective of the of the program that's initializing, right. and it can do things to this object according to what it's the uh, what what it's expressed for its exports in the bindings. Um, so this is an object whose shape is determined by this and is mutable internally in ways that the exported, that the module namespace object served up in other modules would not be. It's like the internal view uh, right. as opposed to the external view. They also pass in the meta object, which we have not implemented, but will obviously need to be in some position on the initialization function. We also pass the originating compartment because we need the originating compartment in, to do, in order to do things like this, um, in order to evaluate the module functor in the context of the compartment that it's being imported into. Um, and we also provide the resolved imports, which are um, the same data as the import specifiers here after they have been resolved to full specifiers in the context of the containing compartment because static module records can be used in different compartments under different relative specifiers. Um, the, the, the resolved specifiers are not known until time of initialization. So, so there are a few things that we need to converge on here. Uh, one is that we ought to add the meta object to our protocol and, uh, and Modable ought to add the compartment and the resolved uh, specifiers. Of course, they don't have to include the resolved specifiers because the initializer should be in a position. Nah, no, they should. They should. <laughs> they, they really should. It should not be necessary for the third-party static module record to close over the resolve function of the compartment it's being initialized in. It should be portable. So yeah, Th those are the those are the big things here. Uh, yeah. Cool. I'm being called away, so I'm going to leave this to the rest of you. Thank you, Dan. Um, yeah, so this is, this is illuminating as well. They make it, uh, the initialized function that they provide may be asynchronous. Um, and if it is asynchronous, they support top level of weight during initialization, which is something we should do, but do not at the moment. That'll require some restructuring of our, um, shims internal protocol. Uh, uh, since our shim is a shim, uh, and the shim, you know, sh and there's already some things that the shim cannot implement reasonably 
that a, a direct implementation can, like a direct direct eval, um, maybe the you know at this point we should just not bother investing in a shim implementation of top level await, and just make sure ours is compatible with theirs, but uh, then just you know leave it to them to to implement top level await. Yeah, they already have. have. So yeah. Maybe, uh, very expensive transforms. Yeah, so yeah. so I'm, I'm I'm suggesting that as long as we're you know we're as long as our semantics is a subset of theirs, um, uh, I don't see any particular reason why we should spend a lot of effort uh, extending the shim to do top level away. Yeah, it was there's certainly not that is certainly our priority number infinity. Um, Relative to I, other I, things. My, my only concern there is if there are like test 262 tests that might need. Yeah, we would have to disable any test 262 that's verifying top level of weight. Yeah, we're, all, we're, we're already going to have to disable other things with regard to things that the shim doesn't implement. Yeah, of course. Um, in any case, I have left us an escape hatch uh, in case we decided at some point down the line to implement it. And that is the, the third party static module. Well, our pre-compiled static module records have sync in there um, in this property um, in order to allow us to eventually distinguish async. Um, okay. That's Great. that's that's all I've done. Um, yeah. So so that actually I think is the entirety of what is what is relevant here. Um, Otherwise, uh, the the implementation is ex is extraordinary extraordinarily thorough. They have this is a, I think a two six two two six two suitable almost example. Of so endowments. So um, so it sounds like mostly we're agreed that we should move towards their API. But there was this uh, this one thing that you called out having to do with the parent compartment that uh, they don't have that that we do and that they need. Yeah, the the upshot is I think that we ought to we probably ought to adopt their bindings. Um, this this bindings object we probably ought to transparently pass anything that isn't source. Uh, through for the purposes of interoperability on the shim so that if somebody provides static module record with this shape that uh, that it would be suitable for returning from uh, to 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 the load hook in a compartment um, so that we can write code in one way even though all it's doing is taking the argument and returning it in our shim um, we probably yeah so we probably ought to adopt this at least in addition to what we already have. Um, and we need to convince Modable to add additional arguments to this and we ought to reserve a space for this meta argument. And, and then we'll be, then I think we will have parity. Great. Yeah. So that's that topic in a nutshell. And I think that runs out the bottom of our agenda. Is there anything anyone would like to discuss beyond that? All right. Well, given that it is Groundhog Day, I'll see you all this morning again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks.